welcome to another episode of the knowledge show powered by knowledgescape my name is ahmed zaman and i will be your moderator for today's session for everyone who is new on the show the knowledge show is an initiative to bring educational leaders from across the globe to share their perspectives on technology business talent development and life in general the discussion in today's episode will be around the topic the evolution of corporate learning since covid-19 and without further ado i would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you our guests first up is jeff anderson with over 25 years of sales leadership experience jeff is passionate about delivering positive business outcomes through innovation creativity and focus as chief business officer us for nolscape jeff is leading nolscape's us operations an award winning accomplished leader jeff has a broad background including experience with startups mid-sized and fortune 500 organizations jeff has gained executive leadership sales and talent management experience in key positions and global roles with leading organizations thank you jeff for joining us for this show it is great to be here thank you a special guest for today's show is eliot massi Eliot Massey is a provocative, engaging, entertaining researcher, educator, analyst and speaker focused on the changing world of the workplace, learning and technology. Eliot is acknowledged as the first analyst to use the term e-learning and has advocated for a same deployment of learning and collaboration technology as a means of supporting the effectiveness and profitability of enterprises. He heads the Massey Center in Saratoga Springs New York focused on how organizations can support learning and knowledge within the workforce thank you so much eliot your profile is really interesting and it was really difficult to select a few statements from there but uh, since you already mentioned about the broadway and and the kind of things you have been producing it's really great and uh, we we are privileged to have you uh, on the show thank you so much oh. for your time It's an honor to be with you. Yes. So Jeff and Elliot uh, before we move on to the more serious discussions which relate to the theme for to uh, today's show, right? We believe that uh, we uh, you know learning is not fun uh, without having a little of uh, uh, ice breaking between the uh, candidates, right? So we have a rapid fire section here. where i'll ask uh, certain would you rather questions so that the audience and you to get to ne- know each other's uh, behavior and preferences through uh, these questions right so uh, since jeff is an internal guest uh, he won't get the advantage so i'll go with him first so jeff uh, the first question for you in this segment is would you rather quit linkedin or quit whatsapp i would rather quit whatsapp <laughs> and why is that oh i you know i think uh, i think it's one of too many messaging apps that i have uh, ha- have on my phone right so you spoken like a true business leader right having chosen linkedin or whatsapp great <laughs> the next question for you jeff is would you rather have an angry client or an angry coworker wow Uh that's a good one. Uh I I think that I would rather have an angry client. Uh and I think the reason why I would have an angry client is because that sets the table for dialogue. It gives you something to solve. Um and so uh and so I would go with an angry client. That that's a very interesting perspective. I must say I wasn't expecting that response. Great. Uh we move to the next question for you Jeff and it is uh would you rather have virtual team calls or in person meetings oh wow this is uh this is a th- this is a great one and uh and and having recently pulled together um our entire us team uh for an in person meeting uh i am a big fan of the power of uh, of in person meetings so i would rather have an in person team meeting great uh, uh the next question for you jeff is what do you appreciate more sincerity or passion 
I uh, I am a uh, I am a person who who believes in the power of passion, and so uh, and so uh, my vote is there is uh, is passion. Awesome. So we we come to the last question for you in this segment, Jeff, and it is: Would you rather never be able to use technology, or never be able to do anything without technology? Oh wow. <laughs> I would, uh, I would, uh, I, I, and this is, uh, and this is just coming off of ten days of leave while I did not use any uh, part of technology. <laughs> so, uh, but I think in the context of business, uh, you know, can I would rather do nothing without leveraging technology. Wow, I think you've done really well in this segment, Jeff. Very interesting uh, perspectives and answers there. Thank you so much. With that, we move to Elliot. And uh, the first question that I have for you is, Elliot, would you rather stop using paper or stop using plastic? Uh, stop using plastic, actually. Yes. Okay. The next one for you is, would you rather get work done faster or better? Better. Interesting. Uh, the next one for you is, uh, would you rather uh, have emails for work interactions or would you rather chat? I think chat. I think chat is more personal and it's actually more efficient in this sense. Yeah. Right. So here's a perspective for all our viewers out there who have this debate going on between emails and uh, messenger apps like Slack and, and Teams, right? The next question for you is, would you rather have uh, experience-based decision-making or data-driven decision-making? Wow, that's, that's, that's a really difficult one. That's like, do you want air or water? Uh, <laughs> um, I, think, I think I would ultimately go to experience, um, but it's, that's a almost impossible one to choose because experience is what gives you data, whether it's numerical or not. Um, yeah, but I would, I'd lean a bit more towards experience. Wonderful. Uh, with that, we come to the last question for you, Elliot, in this segment, and it is, would you rather have great food every day or travel to a new place every month? Um, I'll go for travel. Uh, I think myself and many people have missed doing a lot of travel. But when I get there, First thing I'm going to do is get <laughs> food. So, so I'll cheat. I'll cheat on that answer. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Uh, I think we have got a wonderful round with us. Coming. We will now move uh, to the next segment, which is around the theme-based discussion and which is around how our learning has evolved ever since COVID-19. But I will start with a very basic question here. And it is to you, Jeff. Uh, why do you think uh, continuous upskilling has become so important in uh, today's uh, day and age? Well, I think that, you know, kind of the first piece, you know, is that, you know, kind of businesses have moved significantly. The pendulum has swung from, from highly specialized roles to broad practitioners. So that skill level required is, is much broader than it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But in addition, you know, if you look at the demands uh, that organizations are facing today, not only are they broad, uh, not only are they complex, uh, but those requirements then fall to the employees of that organization. Uh, so, and the and the speed at which those challenges are coming um, are, are are faster than ever as well. So, it's complexity, uh, it's speed, uh, and it's and, and it's organizational needs and the broader perspective of of individual roles. Uh, great, great uh, perspective there, Jeff, and very interesting since you mentioned the speed at which things are coming at us and how we need to be prepared for that. Eat, what's your take on that? Well, I think we are in a time, and I think we're in the middle of it, which is both exciting and frustrating. We're in a time when things are changing pretty radically. You know, uh, I, I view that in many ways we're, uh, we're kind of like a 12-year-old, a teenager, 
you know, and the world around us is changing. It's changed during the pandemic. It's changed with changes in the marketplace. It's changed with changes in careers. Um, and it's an, it's an ambiguous time for both people and for, for organizations. Uh, but I would go and I would echo what Jeff is saying. Um, we need to have the, the flexibility and the agility to be able to go both broad and then to become enormously skilled and ready to be very, very specific. Um, I think our image of what a job is or a career is, is, is totally different and will be totally different than it was uh, 20 years ago, even to the point where many of the large Fortune 100 companies have decided that college degrees are, are nice but not required. If you can show that you have skill, if you can show that you have a readiness to uh, to do a role, then they will help develop you into that that role. But uh, it's a it's a wonderfully middle time for uh, the 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 process of change. Great and, and a very interesting point made by you there about the ambiguous times. Uh, that, that we are in right now. And I'm sure with your immense experience in the industry, right, you have seen a lot of these eras where, which have been defined. It really makes the outbreak of COVID-19 a watershed event in the evolution of learning practices. Elliot, if you can take that first. Well, I think a couple of things have happened. Um, I think our learners have changed. I think our organizations have changed. I think Bluntly, our world has, has changed. Uh, in the year 2006, a number of years ago, I invited to one of my big global learning conferences an expert on pandemics. Uh, it was a gentleman who worked in Washington, D.C., and he studied pandemics. And he got up on stage and he was describing what a pandemic would look like. In fact, he was describing something probably 50% as serious as COVID was. And he said, we better be ready because we're not ready. And I will tell you, and I've had many speakers at my conferences, the audience was bored with what he was talking about. The audience was going, oh, that, that's never, that's never going to happen, you know. Right. Uh, but the reality is that it did. And in that process of change, that's there, once again, our learners have changed. Our learners are more self-reliant. Our learners are needing to get support in different ways. And to be honest, some of our learners are burnt out and or disrupted by that process. Uh, our organizations are changing. And, um, you know, you, you go look at, I was talking yesterday to one of the largest banks in the United States. 64% of their employees are still working at home. Uh, and they're not planning for that to change. Uh, and it's changed their view of what a job is. And then finally, the marketplace uh, has, has changed. Uh, and I don't believe in that process that we were ready. Uh, nobody was, was ready for this. And so I think learning has had to do experimentation, and catch up to your point, Jeff, uh, I miss being together with people. But on the other hand, I really like the fact that I could come down and do this. Mm -hmm. And it's nine o'clock in the morning in, here, and I'm wearing my shorts. And, uh, and afterwards, I'm going to connect with a friend and then travel to New York. So it's that combination of what technology enables us to do. And now I think we need to weave back in what you said, the magical moments when we physically get together with people and we share air and space and maybe food and ideas. So uh, much has changed and we need to accept how big a moment of change it is because, because it's that big, we're not 100% certain about what to do or what to do next. And that's, that's life. Elliot, uh, very interesting uh, perspectives there. Uh, Jeff, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, sure. You know, I look uh, I, I look through the eyes of the of the corporate learning professional uh, or executive. You know, kind of thirty six months ago, 
Uh, and if you looked at, you know, kind of their budget allocations, you, you know, I, uh, I spoke to one that said that they had millions of dollars um, in budget allocation around physical in-person trips um, that had orientation. So folks would come in to corporate uh, and they would get a sense of the values. They would get a sense of the leadership. They would get a sense of the culture. Uh, and, and those budgets, uh, while they while, while they didn't evaporate, uh, that learning leader had to very quickly figure out how am I going to leverage those millions of dollars that I was using for in-person engagement around training and development uh, and learning? And how can I deploy that enterprise-wide? Uh, so what systems are right? What medium are right? Um, what messaging is right? Um, how are we going to measure the effectiveness of that person that we've never met? Um, so I look at, at those uh, elements from that learning leader uh, and, and that's what tells me uh, it will never go back uh, to what we saw pre-pandemic. Talk about uh, the trends or industry in the industry needs that we need to watch out for in the near future. What, according to you, would those be, Elliot? Well, I think there are a couple of things I'm looking for. Um, I believe that we need to develop uh, an ability for an individual to be in better control of the learning assets that she has in front of her as she learns. Um, you know, for some people, they want to be able to, for instance, I'm a salesperson. They want to be in a, a customer relationship database over here. They want to see a profile of their customer. They may want to see uh, their five tips for making a sale. Whereas for some other individuals, they may want to have a coach, somebody to go over that process with. So I, I believe, you know, like we would never want a TV set where we couldn't move the dials or a computer where we couldn't press different function keys. So I think that that is one, you know, that is one part of it. I'm also enormously intrigued by what if we start to build augmented reality rather than virtual reality. And what I mean by augmented reality is I don't have to put my goggles on, uh, but that it pops up. And if we take a look at the emerging work that's being done by Google and by Amazon and by Meta and by Teams, I think we're going to have a lot of technology uh, resources around us that we don't necessarily need you know, a very specific device for. Finally, I think the, the last part, it goes back to that early question about data. I think we need to give the learner, the employee data about how they can optimize what they do. And I'll give you an interesting example. I have a friend who's a chief learning officer uh, and uh, she's also a very active single parent. And she sent me a note and she said, you know, I've got this, this challenge, which is that um, by time I go to write notes and letters at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the best thing. And I said, well, flip it around. Uh, why don't you get up an hour before your kids get up and do your writing early in the day? But be sure to not send it at 5 a.m because you will suddenly get everybody worried in that, that, that process. But I actually think that partially what we will have is an era of personalization, of letting each individual optimize and personalize how they work to give them the tools, keep our eye on you know, all the interesting smart tech of AI and machine learning and robotics and the like, but also... At the same time, think about our own health and our own wellness as a human being, because part of what she needed to accept was that she couldn't write when she was stressed out. So how does she now re reframe and restructure what work is like in order to be optimal at work and also to have stuff left over for the very important part of her life, which is her family? Um, valid point made uh, there by Elliot, which balances both technology and human behavior part of 
the entire ecosystem uh, we're thriving in today. Uh, Jeff, any any trends that you would like to highlight that probably uh, we we should look at from a future point of view? Sure. I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I look at it, you know, if we're looking from, you know, external, you know, kind of providers of wh whether it be training content uh, or training technologies, you know, I look at it, you know, really in terms of, you know, probably, you know, kind of three buckets. Uh, you know, kind of organizations and, and chief learning officers are going to want to see more context. Um, so, so what does this application, what does this solution, what does this piece of technology, how is it going to help my specific business? And oh, by the way, don't speak in general industry terms. I want my business. So, so, so that's the, you know, kind of first piece is, is the context piece. You know, that second piece and, and much to what Elliot said is on customization, uh, both customization of the content, but also customization of the learning experience uh, for the learner. Um, so that's the, so that's the, you know, that second bucket that I look through, you know, and then the third bucket, you know, is, is really on speed. Um, so our ability to be able to do one and two in the context of changing business demands, uh, you know, and that speed piece. So, you know, those are the three trends that I would say, uh, be on the lookout for. And, and Jeff, can I add one to that? As I was thinking as you were doing that. We've never had time or, or the tools to understand why a specific employee doesn't learn. You know, we can do a class for 20 salespeople and one or two of them don't, don't learn. Well, I was very taken with what chefs do. I'm always looking outside of our field. So a chef says, you know, if I cook a meal, I always ask people, what are they allergic to? And that's a simple one. But better yet, what do they like or they don't like? And then I'll inevitably get somebody in 20 people. You can tell they didn't love the meal. So you end up having a conversation with them. You know, what if we put less spice in it? Or what if we added some honey? <laughs> or what if we gave you a smaller portion or the like? And suddenly, if you're a chef, you understand how people either enjoy your meal or don't touch it. We haven't done well. That's your personalization at understanding why does that person not learn? And here's a, a difficult one. Maybe the best thing for them is they don't take our training. Maybe the best thing they do is they spend time with another high performer and see what they do. But our biggest mistake is that we can spray the entire workforce with one treatment and that gets us to success. I am so excited about what personalization and what this degree of customization is going to be about. If we can use technology to make that scalable, affordable, and, and, and effective. Indeed. Indeed. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff and Elliot, for uh, lovely uh, examples and some really uh, interesting perspectives there. I'm sure our viewers have uh, a lot of learning to take away from this, but include this show as a tradition. Um, I, I, I want uh, to play this favorite game of mine, which is called First Impressions, since both Jeff and Elliot are meeting each other for the first time. And as humans, we tend to form impressions of each other, right? So it tests uh, how much have you gathered from the other person's personality. So it's a very short round. I'll, I'll begin with you, Elliot, first. So uh, based on your first impression of Jeff, which of the following statements do you think is not true about him? First is Jeff likes to travel to remote islands. Jeff has a second is uh, Jeff has a black belt in karate. And third is Jeff is a foodie who likes to eat around the world. Which statement is not true about him? Number one, the islands. Jeff. Uh, that one is true. Uh, I actually just got back uh, from uh, from, uh, from Rodanthe. Oh wow! <laughs> Great. No problem. We will come to you, Jeff. Now, so based on your first impression of Elliot, which of the following statements is not true about him? First is Elliot is the author of four books. 
second is Eliot owns thoroughbred horses or third over the past 35 years he has presented programs courses and speeches to over 3 million professionals around the world I'm gonna, the, I'm, uh, I'm, I, 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 now this one is is very tricky uh, based on where Elliot is uh, but I would say uh, that number two uh, he does not own uh, thoroughbred horses Nay, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But it would, uh, yeah, no, but I do. We have a couple, and many of them are horses that we bred uh, with the name Matzah. The nice Jewish horses here along along the way. Yeah, but well, no, that, we, we do, do 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 horses. Yeah, that, that threw me <laughs> off because I thought if the pleasure in Saratoga, that would be that would be the ringer question. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the statement that is not correct about Jeff is that he doesn't own a black belt in karate. The statement that is not true about Eliot is that Eliot is the author of four books. In fact, he is the author of more than 12 books, if I'm correct. Right? 14 now. 14, 14 now. When I count it, yeah. So. Great. Uh, that was a tricky one, Jeff. So that's okay. <laughs> because all of them are actually correct because he has authored a lot of books. But uh, I actually wanted to mention the uh, part where he's produced Broadway shows. But since he already mentioned that at the start of the show, I had to remove that one. But anyway, it was very interesting to talk to both of you and uh, experience the uh, very uh, exciting and interesting perspectives that you have presented, not just in the theme based round, but also uh, in, in the fun rounds that we had today, right? So with that, we come to the end of uh, the Knowledge Show with Elliot Massey. And thanks to both of you for uh, joining us on this show. And we will keep you posted whenever we release the show on social media and other platforms. Thank well, you. Fantastic. And a pleasure. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you to meet you. We're so close, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get together for a coffee. Yeah, That's you guys should do that. A deal, a deal. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.